John Coleman and I are with Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood fame and one of our faves. Manny, uh, when we use the word forgotten Hollywood, we're really talking about films and movie making, mm -hmm. um, cinema, if you will. Uh, and yet Hollywood also represents television, radio and a whole bunch of other things. And one of the one of the things that you brought up inadvertently not not too long ago, I wanted you to follow up on it, was that there was a TV show, which is not necessarily your focus, but a TV show that spawned major movie makers. Tell us about that. Well, um, and I've had this conversation uh, off camera with Art. Um, your show of shows, um, with with apologies to Ed Sullivan, who was the first variety show on television, but your show of shows may have been the first great variety show on television. And it, and, and it was because of the talent of Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. But what's not talked about was this wonderful, legendary writing team. And once they separated, individually became terrific on the big screen. Each one of these had major, major careers and, and had a major impact on comedy of the 1960s and the 70s and the 80s and the 90s into the 21st century. And um, I'd like to talk about these, these great writers of comedy. Now, before I do, I do want to throw it to Art because you know, he was well aware of this, even in his youth, that the, the, the writing of your show shows was, was really remarkable. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, so uh, the thing that most impressed me uh, and that I most enjoyed uh, uh, as I was growing up was uh, uh, the, the, the writing of this particular, first of all, I like Sid Caesar and Imogen Coca, but the writers who also participated as actors uh, from time to time, but you had people uh, along the way, they weren't all necessarily there for the entire run, Woody Allen, Mel Brooks. I mean, just dozens of times. As a matter of fact, the only person who, uh, in comedy, that I uh, was one of the uh, uh, people who I'm really passionate about all my uh, young life was uh, Ernie Kovacs. He's probably the only one. That wasn't uh, but, part of this. That wasn't part, wasn't part of it, yeah. but yeah, yeah. everybody else has just had stupendous numbers of hits of TV and and movies. Well, let, since let, let's name let's name some of these famous filmmakers who started out on the Sid Caesar show. Well, let's start with the ones that Art mentioned. Uh, Woody Allen, of course, is still making movies in 2023. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an impact! I mean, it, apart from his scandal personal that he's had over the years, but I yeah. mean, if you look at his breadth of films and his evolution of his filmmaking, I mean, he went from slapstick B movie type comedies like Sleeper and Bananas yes. and yeah. and then all of a sudden the transitions made when he starts telling stories it begins with play it again Sam yeah. but then it moves on remarkably uh, su successful with with Annie Hall and Hannah and right. her sisters and then a litany of these great uh, New York centric films and uh, has these films all have a lot of neur neurotic tendencies in all of their characters. And, and he plays the character. Yeah. <laughs> Many times he does, but sometimes he doesn't. His more right. recent movies like Midnight in Paris or Vicky right. Cristina Barcelona. Uh, Manhattan is, a, 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 I think, an underrated classic. Yeah. Uh, Bullets over Broadway. I mean, these great, great films that tell story about the neurotic tendencies of just normal people. And, 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 and he plays them for laughs. Sometimes he plays them for drama as well, although it, it doesn't encompass the entire film. There are dramatic moments, but I think he has really matured from his early days, which he was he was one of the young guys. He was young, one of the young guns uh, of, of that crew that was part of your show shows. Now, the other one that, that Art mentions, of course, is Mel Brooks. And gosh, he's still with us, just like Woody Allen. He's yeah. still thinking about making movies. Uh, he did do a, recently The History of the World Part Two, three, part three, three, I think. Yeah, part three. Yeah, but I mean, when he was, when he's good, he's absolutely oh. iconic, and when he's not that good, he's still better than most. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, his iconics. I mean, Blazing Saddles, the producers, and of course his masterpiece, Young Young Frankenstein. Yeah. But then, of course, you've got, you know, High Anxiety, and and uh, Silent Movie. 
Robin Hood, Men in Tights, Spaceballs. I mean, just the list goes on and on. And, they, and he has his, his circle or his crew, his team. Of course, Cloris Leachman was in many of these. Gene Wilder was his absolute yeah. part. And his muse, I, yeah. And I really think real perfection was when he was paired in directing and in co-starring with Madeline Kahn. I don't mm -hmm. think it just gets any better than Madeline Kahn. Yeah, and 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 he just he basically discovered her. I mean, I, I I obviously she made other films before this, but I mean, I think I don't think we'd be talking about Madeline Kahn if it isn't for Mel Brooks. And by the way, we've been now three or four minutes talking just about two Brooks and uh, I know. Woody Allen. And there's a, there was another little slacker in there called Simon, right? Neil, yeah, Neil Simon. I mean, <laughs> Neil Simon, another New York centric uh, storyteller. Yeah. Remember, your show of shows was all about New York. Television City was New York. Right. Yes. I mean, the 1950s, everything happened in New York. So you're going to get these writers who are very passionate about the city they love. And Neil Simon, uh, he, he could do slapstick, but I think he was really the creator of the modern sitcom, but he wasn't content on being on television. He actually did sitcom style comedy in his in his films, The Odd Couple. Yes. Which played well, by the way, as a television program later. Yeah. Um, the Out of Towners. Uh, you've got uh, uh, um, Plaza Suite. I didn't think Cl California Suite was as good, but Plaza Suite with, with Walter Matthau. And just like Billy Wilder, he was able to utilize the talents of Lemon and Mathau to perfection. And his stories are very warm hearted. I mean, they're just soft at the core, but they still make you laugh. Yeah. Which I, which I think Neil Simon had. Neil Simon, I think, was best suited for what he ended up doing a lot, which was Broadway. I think he was really best suited yep. at putting actors in a one room situation, like in the odd couple, you know, in, in that apartment. Sure. And, and telling stories in a one room setting, which which is theater, which is really basically theater. And, and his so, his yeah. uh, his Broadway shows went to film. That's exactly right. No, oh, I, 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 my I, favorite I, is way, Goodbye Girl. Oh, what's yeah. that? What's that art? No, no, no. Uh, John says his favorite is Goodbye Girl. It's certainly one of mine as well. But yeah. oh, yeah. Uh, but Neil Simon was, uh, uh, and, and John and I have discussed this, and we've rambled around a little bit, but actually celebrating Act Two, okay, was inspired to me because of Act Two, uh, yeah. the Neil Simon play. And uh, of course, this is slightly different. That was talking about second marriages and stuff like that. But, uh, but we're celebrating our Act Two uh, as a, our audience. So, uh, you know, when we were talking about independently, you and I, uh, on, on some phone call that started out talking about something else, uh, it was there as well. Uh, but uh, again, uh, the, and the, this group of writers, this unique group, actually spawned the movie itself, didn't it? Yes, but before we, we talk about the movie, there was one more name, and if we don't mention yes. this name, it would don't be a leave them out. Carl Reiner. Oh, yep. <laughs> or the Carl little guy. The little guy. Great writer and a great co-star. He would appear on camera. He yeah. and yeah. and by the way, a lifelong friend of Mel Brooks. They were friends until the day Carl Reiner died, and and they both lived well into their nineties. Uh, Carl Reiner would be prolific in the creation of the Dick Van Dyke Show. He actually directed a number of films, but he did something so important in his private life that it actually uh, portends to what's going to happen on the screen. He gives birth. Well, his wife gives birth to Rob Reiner. And yes. I mean, Rob Reiner has done so many great films. I mean, The, the Princess Bride comes to yeah. mind. And yeah. I mean, I mean, he did so many wonderful films. But Carl Reiner, I mean, he directed a little a little film, which is not very popular. But I happen to like called Summer School with Kirstie Alley and, mm. and, uh, and Mark Harmon, which I think was was really kind of a nugget. But I mean, he did more than just that. Carl Reiner uh, may have been the best of the bunch, although he may not have had the most prolific career of the bunch. He, he may have been the funniest and the best of the bunch. Mm. So to answer your question now, Art, yes, it did spawn a movie about, and it was basically the retelling of the week that it's, it's kind of a fictionalized version sure. of the week that Mel Brooks spent when Peter, uh, Peter O'Toole uh, playing Errol Flynn, Errol Flynn was a guest and Peter O'Toole in this film 
uh, stars, and it's called My Favorite Year. And Out and Out, mm. one of the funniest films ever made. It, it's right up there with with um, A Fish Called Wanda and Harold and Maude. I mean, it's one of the all-time great films. My yeah. Favorite Year was produced by Mel Brooks, and it basically is a, a real memory of his when he worked on your show of shows. Yeah. Interesting that one television show could be so um, foundational yes. to so many feature films. Great, I mean, really as a, great as movies. A, the yin to the yang, I mean, you, we could talk about Saturday Night Live, but I don't know that the writers have gone on to do amazing things. The actors surely have. Everybody from sure. Dan Aykroyd to John Belushi yeah. to Gilda Radner to obviously Bill Murray, who's probably been the most prolific of, of the bunch. And others, Eddie Murphy. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Yeah. Um, but those are actors. I mean, those are comedians. Those are stand-up. Those are talent. I'm talking about, as you said, the foundations of what your show shows was, and, and that was the writing team. Yeah. And they went on to make, I, I mean, I think between the four of them, we could probably talk about 60, 70 films? Sure. Mm. And and each of them, importantly, each of them was very influential in movie making. I mean, yeah. the movies they made affected other movie makers. They were all hits. They were all successes. People copied them. Yeah, you're right. And and look, who comes out of these, these, I mean, the stars that come out of these wonderful movies, Diane Keaton, Mia Farrow. Right. Uh, that's in Woody Allen's case. I mean, like I said, Madeline Kahn and Gene Wilder in, in, in the case of uh, our good friend uh, Mel Brooks. I mean, when you talk about Neil Simon, Ma Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Um, you yeah, got Jenny, uh, Rob, uh, uh, Carl, well, Carl through Rob had uh, Meg Ryan in a lot of films. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are just so many so many actors that come out of these these wonderful uh, stories, and boy, could they tell a story. They, yeah. The films were funny, not because they did sight gags. They were funny because they told amazingly human stories that yeah. anybody who watches them could relate to. You didn't yeah. have to live in New York to relate to the stories. Well, the, the key to this is to remember that this group of famous filmmakers started as writers. They yes. really started as writers, not as performers. No. Yeah. Right. I mean, Woody Allen appeared on uh, eventually in movies, and Mel Brooks obviously appeared in movies, Carl sure. Reiner for sure. Uh, right. But, uh, but I mean, you're right. They were writers at their core. Their joy yes. was in writing, not directing, not acting, but in writing. writing. Yeah. And so they are iconic scribes of cinema, theater, and television. Well, Manny, thank you for the uh, original observation about uh, this crew, this TV crew that became mega movie makers. And may I close by saying in terms of celebrating Act Two, love is always better the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Manny. Take care, guys. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.